in the previous video, I went over and kind of gave an explanation on trainals, or uh, specifically trace response channels, and kind of how they work and what they do, and using what we've learned. So since we're using the visibility trace channel, when we have you know, this wall number five set to block right here, it will block the multi-line trace by channel. Even if I'm shooting at this position, so it should hit both walls. If I set it to overlap, it will go through this. It'll also count as a hit, and then it'll hit this wall, wall number seven, and block it. So we would have in the array wall five and then wall seven. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom channel just dedicated for our bullets. So to do that, we go over here to settings, project settings. Under engine, we will see collision. Then we have object channels and trace channels. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new trace channel. I'm going to call this one bullet trace. And default response, I'm going to leave as block. So hit accept. And here we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick save all. So now we go to e collision channel. And we look through these, we have engine trace channels one through six, ignore those. And then we have our game trace channels. So we have one through 18. Yes, one through 18. Now you might be thinking kind of by default, just to go straight to channel one, because that's the only channel that we've actually put it in. But it's probably gonna be channeled something like two or something like that. But the way to figure out which one it is, is to check the default any. This is what you're going to want to do if you have several. So if we go to our project, our project directory, go to config, default engine.any, we'll have this section here for collision profiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for bullet trace. So control F, bullet trace. And it found the first response right here. And we can see the channel name which is ECC Game Trace Channel 2. So the first one is taken up by projectile, which is this object, oops, which is this object channel right here. You can actually see that under object type, projectile, which has just its own kind of list of settings. So for bullet trace, we have ECC Game Trace Channel 2. We'll set this to ECC Game Trace Channel 2 in our line trace and compile. I'm going to go ahead and close the editor so I can restart it since hot reload does not work at all for me. And now when I click on this object, scroll down, we will see this new item under trace response is called bullet trace. Currently it's set to block, so let's give it a test. It should stop at wall five, which it does. It stops at wall five, I shoot over it, it hits wall seven. So now let's set wall five to overlap. So this would be like a piece of plywood, for example, and I shoot it. I hit wall five and wall seven over there. That's pretty much what we want. So we have our own collision channel. And we can even set everything to ignore, but set bullet trace to overlap. So for example, we can walk through this, there's no collisions at all, but I shoot it. It still hits it because of the channel, which granted that's pretty obvious. So we now have our channel set up, and this is what we're gonna set for things like our zombies, uh, certain objects like, I don't know, the, uh, what's Oh, what do you call it? The wood and the, like the wood for the barriers. And we're probably just going to set those to be ignored. And that's kind of stuff. So that way you can have stuff that you can shoot through without any effect. If it's something is, you know, stupid, like, I don't know, even a piece of paper, for example. Or you can have something that will kind of reduce the damage of the quote unquote bullet or line trace if it hits something like. I don't know, a thick pallet. And then we could have blocking channel or certain objects like pillars or concrete walls set to block it. 
So that's what we're going to be using for everything. And in the next, actually, we'll do this now. Uh, we want to go ahead and go to our zombie, the blueprint classes, zombie, and our blueprint zombie base. I'm going to click on our mesh, go down to the collision, collision presets. We're just going to set it to custom. We're going to set the bullet trace to overlap. Compile and save. So now, let's wait for a zombie to appear. I shoot the zombie, shows one. Shoot that. All right, let's see, F8. It's acting like it is only hitting where on the world is collision. Probably would have if I clicked the mesh. So this might be related to the physics asset. No, object type. Or it might be the capsule, actually. Uh, I think it's the capsule that it's messing with it. So let's go back to EP zombie base, click the capsule. Here we have our collision. Collision presets are set to pawn. I'm going to set it to custom. And bullet trace set to overlap. So now let's see what happens. So I shoot it, and it detected three hits. So we need to think about why that is, and we might fix that in the next video. So we have the capsule. We're going through that. We want to flat out, we're going to end up using the physics body, uh, which is mannequin, mesh, or sorry, physics asset as kind of our collision. So that way we can dictate where we hit. Okay, so we have this lower arm, upper arm, and hand. Well, we want a certain amount of damage to be dealt or a multiplier or something like that. When it hits those areas, if it hits the head, we want to have a higher amount of damage, that sort of thing. Well, we need to ignore the capsule if we want to even hit that. So we're going to set that to ignore for the bullet trace. For the mesh, whoops, we have it set to overlap, so let's just see what happens again. Scroll down, dang it. Now let's shoot him. And we hit the zombie, and wall number six. If I shoot through all these, we hit zombies zero, one. All right, so it seems like we hit one twice. It's kind of hard to get to the last one. Zombie base four, it seems like we're still hitting twice. So let's go to the mesh and just set it to ignore the bullet trace again. And just kind of see what happens exactly. And now it's ignoring it entirely. So it could just be hitting multiple points on the body. And for example, if I set it to ignore that and just hit the capsule, which was that's how we're going to have it set up for now. So the mesh is set to ignore bullet trace. The capsule is set to overlap. Now we should only have one hit. So I shoot him. You know, it goes through. It still hits pretty much just whichever zombie is being there. So I'm going to wait and get them all in kind of a line. It's going to be really hard to do. There they go. Then we hit zombie... One, zero, two, three, and four. So we hit all five. So that's how we're just going to leave it for now. So that way we have it a, kind of a basic for overlapping. And that will allow us to set up however we deal damage with penetration. And what I mean by that is we shoot the first zombie in the head and also happen to hit the second zombie in the head. Well, how much damage do we actually want to apply to that second zombie that got hit by the bullet that was already penetrating the first zombie? I think this will be a allow us to just kind of check it at a very basic level. So we now have our custom collision channel set up for bullet trace. And we have it set up in our zombie, which is just to uh, only overlap with the collision or the capsule component. So I think we're good to go to actually continue with our weapon. So that way we can have it fire out of the weapon 
uh, using the bone or the muzzle bone as kind of our point for the transforms. So that way it's uh, the bullets actually or the line trace is actually coming out of the firearm. So anyways, now that that's dealt with, I will see you in the next one.